Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the mini witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This week's video is answering the question, what is an airbrush for and do you need one? In this video, I'm going to go over five things that you can do with your airbrush to both inspire you and help you decide if you need one. First, we will go over why an airbrush is so magical. Then we will talk about xenothyl highlighting, blending colors, OSL, stencils, and inks. So let's get started. The magic lies in the airbrush's ability to atomize paint. Basically, an airbrush has the ability to turn paint into very fine droplets that are then carried to your surface by air. Through the use of a dual action airbrush, you have control of the amount of air and the amount of paint that is released through your brush, giving you the ability to apply in a blend colors with ease. Xenothyl highlighting. Xenothyl highlighting is the act of taking white paint and spraying it from above and black paint and spraying it from below to get the general location of the highlights and shadows on your miniature. This is particularly important if you plan to do OSL, but you don't need to do xenothyl highlighting at all if you don't want to. But I'm not going to lie, it does make things easier. You can do xenothyl highlighting with a rattle can, but it is by far better to use an airbrush. Rattle cans have a tendency to leave thick speckled texture and the gradations aren't going to be nearly as smooth. To achieve an even finer and smoother application, I use white ink instead of white paint, like you see me doing here. However, you totally don't need an airbrush. If you want a general template for how and where light hits your model, take a look at this video here. Or you can look into doing xenothyl highlighting via dry brushing by applying gray and white paint to a black painted model to determine your highlight and shadows. Base coating. One of the great things about airbrushing is the ability to easily and quickly apply a base coat, specifically to larger models. This is twofold. One, you can cover a lot more ground with an airbrush than you can with a brush, especially since the application is again going to be smooth and you don't have to worry about texture buildup or paint strokes. Airbrushes are also great if you need to paint large quantity of smaller models, like an army of space marines that are all going to be the same color. Just set yourself up with an assembly line and you'll be able to knock them all out pretty quickly. However, if you're only going to be painting a one-off 28 millimeter model, using an airbrush isn't actually that much faster. Consider the amount of time that takes you to set up the airbrush, mix your paint, dilute your paint, apply it to your model, and then clean up. On smaller models, I rarely pull out an airbrush unless I'm doing a ton of skin, for example, on a Kingdom Death model. Then an airbrush is a lifesaver. Blending. An airbrush is an amazing way to blend paint colors together. Since the paint is atomized, when you apply it to your miniature, it is going to be a pure color. Here on the Hutu from Celestial Models, I was able to apply both red, green, and purple without ever needing to worry about those colors canceling each other out, or choppy gradations. Another wonderful element about using an airbrush is the extremely smooth nature of airbrushing. Again, the paint is atomized, it applies in an unbelievably smooth finish, where you never have to worry about brush strokes or pulling up unwanted texture. I especially like to airbrush skin, as ideally, your skin will be very smooth. While one can definitely create smooth and subtle gradations with a brush, it's just going to be so much easier with an airbrush. Though this ability to apply seamless gradations is beautiful, it isn't always the fastest or easiest way to paint. For me, at least, an airbrush is hard to control or hard to put the paint exactly where I want it if I need it in an extremely specific location. When I was working on the cape for my BBEG, I was trying to add the highlight straight down the middle of the uppermost fold of the cape. And every time I applied it, you could just tell that it was extremely shaky because I was trying so hard to get there to be this 
perfect line. The easier thing for me is to apply my paint with my paintbrush and then blend that out with an airbrush. Most people, obviously, are incredibly adept at painting with their paintbrush. So getting the precision that I need with my brush is so much easier than trying to get my airbrush perfectly where I want it. I will also block in my colors of paint with a paintbrush if I'm not sure what I want the model to look like. It is a heck of a lot easier to go and play and create and apply new and interesting colors with a paintbrush than it is to change out colors over and over with an airbrush if I'm not sure what I want. OSL. OSL, or Object Source Lighting, is the creation of a fictional light source either on your miniature or off screen of your miniature. Consider OSL like the glow of a fireplace or the setting sun. I will admit, painting OSL is a lot easier with an airbrush, but it's not required. To paint OSL, all you have to do is take your airbrush, place it approximately where your light source is, and pull the trigger. You can of course do this when you're doing your zenithal highlighting, or you can apply the paint in the same way closer to the end. To do OSL without an airbrush, you can hold your model up to your eye as if your eye is your light source and see where the light hits. Areas that you can see will be hit directly by your OSL. Consider how bright your light source is, as that will help determine how far the light will travel across your miniature. Stencils. Stencils are a far less popular thing to do with airbrushing, but are incredibly cool. Generally, stencils are stickers with patterns or letters utilized on large vehicles or monsters. Stencils can make such details a million times easier instead of trying to paint leopard spots individually. However, you can also use stencils far more creatively. For example, this window light that I created in this vampire diorama. This stencil was created with coffee stirrers and the light source was created with an airbrush. In total, this application took me like 30 seconds. And the idea of trying to perfectly paint each panel of light on this floor sounds like a nightmare. I'm sure that there are hundreds of other cool things that you could do with stencils. I've seen dryer sheets used as marble texture, and I've always mulled over the idea of using tape on a bus to create that harsh blind texture that was so popular in 1940s film noir. I'm sure that you can use stencils and push them as far as your creativity will take you. Inks. Inks are the last cool thing that you can apply with an airbrush. Now you can absolutely apply inks with a paintbrush, but there is something about that perfect application of inks over a perfect application of xenophil highlights. Inks are a dye, which means that they're basically just suspended color. So if you apply inks over your perfect xenophil highlights, basically you're just applying color over your already perfect value of highlights and shadows. You can also apply inks in general over your miniature to change the overall hue. Say you had this idea of this perfect deep brown and somehow your miniature ended up being too yellow, you can just spray brown ink right over that. Or maybe your highlights accidentally got too bright and you've lost the shadows on your model. Go ahead, put some black ink in that airbrush, spray up from below, and pull those shadows back. Inks will only change the color of your paint. They're not going to completely cover up what you've already done. So you can go ahead and add inks at almost any time without losing a bunch of your work. However, Inks can be incredibly intense, so be sure to dilute your ink and test it out before you go anywhere near your nearly finished miniatures. I hope that this video was useful and helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching me here on YouTube. You can support me, of course, by subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing. The best way is to support me on Patreon, which again, I've told you enough about. I would love to see you there. My community is 
expanding at an incredible rate, and I'm so excited, so please, we would love to have you. I hope that things are going well for you. If you use any of these techniques, please feel free to tag me on Instagram. I love to see your work. I hope that you are having a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.